About a month into the last legislative session, Republican Representative Dustin Manwaring, alongside newly elected Secretary of State Phil McGrain, introduced House Bill 138. This was the bill that was intended to take the state presidential primary we usually hold in March and move it to May to coincide with the regular primary we have every other year to vote for state offices. And making this move was supposed to do two things. It would go along with the push among many in the majority party that Idaho has too many election days. So consolidate them. And it would save the state $2.7 million to move it to May. Well, it passed the House with flying colors. However, while it was over on the Senate side, the bill's sponsors were notified there might be a problem with the bill. While it did those two things, consolidating and saving money, it also eliminated a presidential primary altogether because it removed language which specified the filing process for presidential candidates, things like filing deadlines and such. They were not accounted for in this new bill. It still passed the Senate and was signed by the governor on March 30th. And that date is significant because in an effort to fix that error, Representative Man Manwaring tried to push a trailer bill through the House State Affairs Committee on the morning of March 30th. State Republican Party Chairwoman Dorothy Moon showed up to say she was not a fan. I represent the party of Idaho and here in Idaho, and I'm very concerned that the primary stakeholder on this issue was never consulted. She added an anecdote about how she spoke with Secretary McGrain about it and made it clear she did not support House Bill 138. In fact, she actually wanted Idaho to move its presidential primary to February to make Idaho, as she put it, the Iowa of the West. Okay, despite how many times people actually geographically confuse Idaho for Iowa, we have never really had much impact on the presidential election because, well, of our lack of delegates. So that probably wouldn't happen no matter when we held a presidential primary. Regardless, the House committee meeting about the trailer bill, Senate Bill 1186, the one to fix the mistake, well, it ended like this. Thank you, Representative Manwari. Any final questions for Representative Manwari? Seeing them, Senate Bill 1186 is properly before the committee. Senate Bill 1186 dies for a lack of a motion. Um, sorry. Already made my decision. Um. Already made his decision. He waited five seconds to make that decision, by the way. He gaveled the end of the meeting 18 seconds after that, leaving another item on the agenda for the next day. However, there would be no next day for the State Affairs Committee or the House State Affairs Committee, and the legislature would sign a die a week later. So 1186, well, that never showed up again. Then in June, at the state party meeting in Chalice, the Idaho GOP decided they're going to solve the problem of not being able to have a presidential primary leading up to the 2024 election by going old school. The Firehouse Caucus is our solution. On Saturday, March 2nd, 2024, Republican voters from across the state will gather in their counties and districts to select our delegates to the RNC's presidential nominating contest. This moves Idaho into the early stages of the nominating fight, allowing Idaho Republicans to vote before Super Tuesday. So the caucus, for those who are not aware, is a word with really without a definitive origin. It first showed up in the Northeast colonies of early America, and it referred to clubs or meetings where people got together to discuss politics, to elect someone or decide on an idea. And that's what happens in a modern day caucus, too. People get together in a room to discuss who they want to elect. People make speeches to convince those who are undecided or persuade someone else to jump ship. And they physically stand together in a group to show their support of one candidate or another. And this continues until one group contains a majority of the whole. And it's a process that could take hours. And in Idaho, it's been within the last decade, political parties have held caucuses in presidential primaries. The Democrats had one in 2016, the Republicans back in 2012. So the biggest difference between a caucus and a primary, you might be asking, well, it's the number of people who participate. And we're going to get into that in just a bit. But that was a big complaint coming out of the GOP summer meeting, this idea of having Republican issues and candidates decided by a smaller percentage of the party. And this idea, Joe Paris found out, is really driving a wedge through the Republican Party of Idaho. What I'm hearing from my constituents and other members of the Republican uh, Senate is that it's much better to let people go to the polls. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, election integrity and making sure people have the right to vote. This is one of those issues. We need to make sure that we do not exclude or disenfranchise people who want to participate in the presidential primary. Senate Majority Leader Kelly Anthon, along with other Republican legislators, received this email from Party Chair Dorothy Moon. 
in it. Moon says that the party will be having a March caucus unless lawmakers repeal House Bill 138, restoring the March election date. Lawmakers passed House Bill 138 to consolidate the March and May elections in Idaho so they could save millions of dollars. I can tell you I am not voting to repeal something that is saving the taxpayers three million dollars every election cycle. Both chambers, we're always trying to be super conscious of taxpayer dollars and where they can be efficiently used. And that's why we did the, the consolidation down to May. House Majority Leader Megan Blanksmith says lawmakers clearly voted to consolidate elections to save money. It's not something they will just undo on a whim. On top of that, she is hearing major concerns from constituents about a March caucus, questions about voter turnout, the format of it all, if different areas even have facilities to hold a caucus. What about weather conditions to travel? What we're hearing from our constituents is, is there a way for you to help to make sure that all of the voices of the constituents that are Repu registered Republicans are heard. That is a complicated question because the state central committee and the legislature, they operate in different spheres. Does the chairman and the state central committee have the authority to say regardless of what gets passed here, we don't want to do a May primary, we are going to do a March caucus. Absolutely. Yeah. That's because the, it's the Republican Party. It's not the Idaho State Legislature that determines. Leader Anthony appreciates the position of wanting a March primary. He pushed for the idea in the legislative session. I supported leaving the, the primary in March, but uh, I also represent all of the Republicans in the Idaho State Senate. And it's very clear that the majority of Republicans wanted to move that primary. For me now, it's not so much about my own personal position on the thing, it's a matter of are we going to allow, how can we allow the Idaho voter to go to the polls and cast their own votes to get as much participation as possible in choosing who should be nominated as a Republican presidential nominee? For now, lawmakers don't want to call a special session because they may not be able to solve the issue if the state central committee won't budge on having a March caucus. On top of that, the clock is ticking on national deadlines for the GOP process. So I don't, I don't know that there's a legislative solution. I don't know if it means we start working with the national party to see if we can find another avenue, at least so people feel like they're heard. I, I don't. We've, we've not come to any sort of solution to, to what our constituents are asking us for. And Leader Blanksma does tell me that yesterday they talked through about 10 different ideas and they're still working as a leadership group to see what path forward there could be. I will add, I did reach out to uh, Chairwoman Dorothy Moon with the Idaho State Republican Party. I did ask her about her thoughts on kind of rescinding the, the saving of tax dollars, about $3 million that the House bill accomplished. I also asked her about a hypothetical, Brian, that we have heard from lawmakers and other people in the community. So as you touched on, in a caucus, it, it's one time at one place. If you're active duty or if you're True. sick or if, if you're not able to make it that day, do you just lose your ability to vote or be a part of it? Okay, so the legislature gave themselves the, the ability to call themselves back. Is that a possibility to decide this before March? They could, but at the same time... Before January, I should say. There are deadlines, October, end of this year, from the, the GOP nationally, that you need to hit these deadlines. So if they were to come back in January and do it, it might be too late. So a special session, could the lawmakers call themselves back? They could, but at the same time, even if they do create a May primary, we heard from Chairwoman Moon that sh she wants to do a March caucus. And uh, Chair Moon has really been clear that she believes Idaho should be earlier in the process. So we'll see how this shakes out, but right now it's not solved. We've also heard from Secretary McGrain that even if they wait till the session starts in January, it may not be enough time to start something up for a March primary. Thank you very much, Joe. Meanwhile, on the other side of the spectrum, the ask for a primary election is unanimous. Last month, the Idaho Democratic State Central Committee announced they wanted a special session to figure it all out as well. Like we said, they have the most recent experience with a presidential caucus, nearly two election cycles ago, but still not long enough for the bad taste to have left their mouths. Andrew Bartline talked to the Idaho Democrats today, and they tell him, they tell you, Andrew, I should say, they have no interest in going back to this. Yeah, the Idaho Democrats describe the process as arduous. That's a million-dollar word to describe what they say is as many problems, mostly due to the logistics. But even at its best, the Democrats are convinced a caucus is an inferior process to a primary for the people of Idaho to select their chosen candidate. There's a time and place where political preferences take center stage. Because at a presidential caucus, each voter's fighting for their voice to be heard. But some say mm -hmm. they shouldn't have to. Yeah. Including Idaho Democrats Jared DeLuth. 
Our principle is one person, one vote, and that is what this should be. Should be, because a caucus has added barriers. The process takes hours. And that's not until you even get in the door. This line is footage from the Ada County Democrats 2016 presidential caucus. The party knows the struggles firsthand. It's an incredibly difficult thing to pull off. And essentially you have to get all of the voters who want to participate into one room somewhere and actually be able to count them and, and uh, have them cast their ballot in that sort of way. The signs, the teams, the chance. The process, it better resembles a sporting event than election. Fittingly in a venue best known for puck drops. You have to ask the question, who does this benefit? Numbers show, not the voters. In the Idaho Democratic 2016 presidential caucus, roughly 24,000 people voted. In the Democrats' 2020 presidential primary, nearly 110,000 Idahoans cast their ballots. That primary shows a 350% increase in voter participation. And everything that we have seen is the far right continues to gain more power in the Republican Party. Power that Duluth says is inherently built into the caucus system. Amid the debates and discourse, it's the political party, not the state, playing the part of referee. Determine the time, location, the rules of who can participate, uh, and so it's very easy for party bosses to put their thumb on the scale here, uh, which should be of a concern for everybody. But not of high enough concern for the powers that be inside. This is another case of will the moderate Republicans ever stand up to the far right? The current law states the Democrats can still run a regular primary in place of a caucus, but that requires more of their private dime, time, and resources. It's an incredible financial and organizational burden that neither party uh, would be well equipped to do. Duluth and the Democrats are calling on a special session to pass the trailer bill to bring back state-run presidential primary elections. But he's been in this game before. We're not holding our breath, <laughs> we'll say that. Because most likely, he'll be holding a caucus. As someone who cares about every Idahoan being able to vote, um, there's, there's a lot of concerns with uh, how this is going to be conducted, even on the Republican side. If stuck holding a caucus, Duluth says the Democrats are committed to a plan that allows military members serving out of country to participate. If two-thirds of lawmakers cannot come to an agreement to get together for a special session, the Democrats say then it's Governor Brad Little's job to call that special session. And between the Democrats and what seems to be a decent chunk of Republicans on the other end, mm -hmm. you would think, Brian, that there's a simple majority, but for this to happen, as you touched on earlier, that bill would still have to get out of Chairman Crane's desk. It would, and it didn't uh, at the end of last session. You talked about the Democratic numbers when it comes to caucus versus primary. Some Republican numbers for you. 2012 was the last time they held their caucus, right, mm -hmm. in Idaho. 45,000 Republicans participated in that caucus. Jump ahead to the next year, four years later in 2016, 225,000 Republicans participated. So a vast difference between participation numbers from one year to the next. Clearly a drop in participation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Andrew.